Who are two surprise Seattle Mariners this season? Let's talk about it. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about two guys that have been really, really surprising for the Seattle Mariners in a season that's kind of been very up and down. As we know, we don't really know if we're going to make the playoffs. It's definitely going to be a grind, but we will see. But here are two guys that really have come out of nowhere so far this season and have been really, really impressing us, whether it's in a small sample or not. So the most obvious answer that a lot of you guys are probably expecting is Victor Robles, but I feel like I'm not going to talk about him so much in this video because as we know, he got extended and this is something that, you know, we kind of all saw coming, hopefully, or we at least hope for that he would get extended based on how well he started with us. Been a little bit of a struggle ever since, but definitely be something we all expected slash hoped for. So if you're expecting Victor Robles to be one of these guys, I'm definitely not going to be talking about him, so I'm sorry. The first one is going to be a little bit of a smaller sample size and not too, too big, but definitely something that came as a surprise for how well he is performing. And then the second one is definitely a massive surprise, but definitely in a much bigger, bigger sample. So the first surprise Seattle Mariner this season is going to be shortstop Leo Rivas. And I know there are definitely going to be a lot of you that are kind of like, oh, whatever, like he hasn't really been doing that much. And I, I wouldn't disagree with you. I think he's been doing his job in JP's absence, especially for a guy who has been in the minors since 2015. He started in the minor leagues when he was 17 years old and he is currently 26. And this season with the Mariners is his first taste of Major League Baseball. So that is almost nine full seasons in the minor league. So for a guy who has yet to sniff Major League Baseball until this season and played nine years of minor league baseball, he is definitely doing a fairly good job. One thing that stands out to me the most about Leo Rivas' minor league stats is his walk rate. So in AAA, when he was with the Mariners, he had 266 ABs and he had a 20.7% walk rate, which is really, really good. It means he's seeing the ball very well. Now that really has not translated to the major league level. I believe he only has about an 8% walk rate and a pretty high strikeout rate at about 28 percent so definitely something that he is hopeful to improve on but i mean look at these numbers in a small sample size and only 63 plate appearances at the major league level he has a 7.9 walk rate like i said a 28.6 percent k rate seven rbis a 108 wrc plus a 0.3 war across 27 games for a guy that you would have never really expected to do pretty much anything during his time here and if he was even going to get playing time with demo and maybe having demo just play straight shortstop until jp comes back he has been doing a very good job that being said he also had his first career walk off the other night against the giants which was great to see just simplified and got the ball in play so for those reasons that is why he is the first surprise player for the seattle mariners this season now, number two, we are going to move into the bullpen with a crazy shock that nobody really expected, and that is bullpen pitcher Colin Snyder. Now, the one thing you have to focus on with Colin is his improvement over the years. He was with the Royals for the first two seasons of his major league career, and the Mariners had just picked him up this season. And there are only three relief pitchers in all of major league baseball who have a sub one ERA. That is first Emmanuel Class A, which does not come to a surprise. Then Edwin Uceta from the Tampa Bay Rays. I personally have never heard of him until doing research, but he has a 0.86 ERA, I believe. And then it's Colin Snyder with a 0.98 ERA. Now, what makes this so impressive to me is one, how unexpected it is. And two, I'm going to go through his previous stats with the Royals and just see how much of improvement he's had with the Mariners pitching development. So in 2022, which was Colin's first season at the major league level, he pitched in 34.1 innings where he had a 5.77 K per nine, a 0.79 home run per nine, a 6.55 ERA and a negative 0.1 war in 2022 with the Royals. Now, in 2023 with the Royals, he would improve a little bit, but his war was even worse. He pitched in 20.1 innings with a 4.87 K per nine, a 1.33 home run per nine, a 4.87 ERA, and a negative 0.3 war. So when the Mariners acquire a guy like this, this is something nobody really thinks of or even looks into that much. You're like, okay, another bullpen arm, whoopsie do. Like, this guy has had a pretty bad pass in, in the past with the Royals. So definitely something that nobody really expects to do well, but he has been an absolute dog out there. Even in clutch situations like extra innings, he has absolutely dominated. So this season for the Mariners, he has pitched in 27.2 innings where he has a 10.41 K per nine, only 0.33 home runs per nine, a 0.98 ERA, and a 0.8 war, which is a huge improvement from his career numbers. The biggest jump besides the obvious ERA is his K per nine, which has almost doubled his career high. Previously, it was a 5.77, and now he's up to a 10.41. That is almost doubling his Ks per nine, which is absolutely insane. 
And it really just shows how well that the Mariners can develop pitchers, whether that's bullpen arms or starting pitchers. We haven't seen too much of developing. Obviously, we don't acquire too many starting pitchers because we have a solid five, but look how many pitchers in our system have come up through the system and haven't been traded. I believe everyone except Luis Castillo has come up through the system, which is absolutely so impressive. But for a bullpen that has been very hot and cold with guys like Taylor Saucedo and Gabe Spire having down years from what we hoped they would have, Colin Snyder is definitely a massively sneaky surprise up there with Munoz. And, you know, there's, our bullpen has really just had a lot of issues, not having Matt Brash all year, Gregory Santos being on and off the injured list. And Andres Munoz has really been the only guy that we could rely on until you look at Colin Snyder's stats and really see how well he has done in 2024. I think there definitely are some maybe few other honorable mentions, but as we know, the Seattle Mariners have really been disappointing us so far this year. Even the new acquisitions have really started to struggle. Randy Rosarena has yet to figure it out. So it has really just been a struggle. And these two guys have really come out of nowhere in terms of really helping this team in terms of production from the bullpen as well as offensively from Leo Rivas and you know his glove is okay it doesn't he sometimes makes really nice plays but it's really nothing to be too crazy about but I hope he has earned a roster spot because like I said being nine years in the minor leagues is a grind and he stuck it out and finally made a major league roster so I really hope they don't send him back down when JP comes back up I hope maybe they send somebody else who's been a little bit less productive but if he keeps producing at this rate until JP comes back he'll definitely earn his spot as at least a backup shortstop but I'm curious who, in your guys' opinion, has been kind of a shock for the Mariners this year on a team that, you know, has really, really struggled. But otherwise, I hope you guys did enjoy the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.